As Storm Babette is battering the northeast coastline at the moment, I thought I'd take a little bit of time um, to talk about my approach to transferring details from a plan to the wood that needs to be cut out. Now, what I've got here is a set of plans that I actually mentioned in a previous video that I'm looking at, and they are the plans for the Mini Playboy, which are available as a free download from Outer Zone. Uh, it's in German, but Mark Robinson, fellow club member, managed to do a translation for the information sheet. Uh, and reading between the lines, uh, I think it's a, a build that I would enjoy making. But if you're working from plans, one of the things you have to do is to transfer this information from the sheets to the wood and there are a number of approaches that I've used depending on what I'm doing, uh, how many I have to cut out and um, how many corners I want to cut to be quite honest with you. So what we have here, are uh, this, this is the issue, I want to get these drawings onto that sheet. Perhaps the most obvious thing to do is to simply cut them out and glue them on and then draw you can actually cut them directly out in that way that's fine if it's a large model and you're not concerned about the paper being stuck on to the balsa but it is unsightly and if it's a, a lightweight model and particularly if you're talking about a tail area where weight is a significant issue then that's not perhaps a good idea a way around that is to use some low tack masking tape to simply stick it down onto the wood and then you can glue the paper on to the masking tape, cut through it and when you're happy you've got an accurate representation of the particular part, in this case a rib, one simply peels it off the balsa wood. That's great if you're only doing um, a couple of ribs or specialist parts at the end of a wing, for example. However, this particular part, I need 14 of these. And to do it in the way I've just described would be quite laborious. An alternative is to Use the method I've just described by gluing the paper onto the wood, but this time you don't glue it onto the balsa wood, you actually glue it onto some plywood. Sixteenth is ideal for this. Cut round it, sand it to shape, ensure that it's an accurate representation of the part, and then you can simply use that, if you use a couple of thumbtacks through holes to stop them moving, you can hold them in position and then cut them directly out. A method that I've used in the past is to actually make two plywood templates that are then drilled through and bowled together. But in between, I would cut out 14 rectangles over size from the wood, make a sandwich together of them, trim them and sand up the shape. And when you remove the plywood templates from the bolts, you end up with 14 identical parts. A very simple, very direct method, if you don't want to clart about like that, and what I've used in the past, is actually to use a pin. You hold the plan in place, pin a number of dots for the ribs or the part, and then when you take it off, you can see the dots and you join them together with a pen and cut round them. All of them are possible. Um, obviously they take a little bit more effort than a kit built model would be or a short kit, but that's part of the fun. And you can get ribs and parts that match absolutely perfectly. The model that I'm working on at the moment, the Falcon, there was a discrepancy in the notches that were pre-cut out 
and the position of the spars on the plan. And you just have to work around that and, and basically you, you shift the position of the spar slightly uh, and glue on the notch that's in there. But if you cut them out yourself, you can ensure that they're very accurate. So that's how I'm going to approach it. There's one other method that I have used in the past. Um, I haven't tried it with a printed off um, copy. But if you photocopy, or it used to work with old photocopies, I don't know if it still do, does. If you photocopy the plan and then turn it over and put it face down, I have managed in the past to iron on the back of the paper and it transfers the, the toner comes off the print and goes onto the wood. I think modern laser print printers and ink, inkjet printers uh, that may not work but I know certainly it used to work with old photocopiers and I have done it in the past. So just some ideas when I actually come to do it I'll do a little short video when I'm cutting the ribs out. Um, looking at the translation I've discovered some of the parts are calling for spruce uh, which I haven't got um, and I'll have to source that material or cut it out from some that I have uh, in the loft, but I'll have to find that first. Um, so, until the next time, um, get flying if you can do. If you can't, get building. Bye for now.